Hi, I'm Curtis Thompson. Welcome to 320 Workshops. Today's project is a chair. So pull up your own chair and see how I fix this one. All right, so here we go. Oak, mission style chair, probably from the uh, teens or 20s. Uh, it's got a oil cloth upholstered seat on it. When it was new, probably looked like a faux leather. It's worn pretty, pretty much, but I kind of like the looks of it, so we might just keep this. It's in good shape, even though it, it, it's worn looking. Uh, but if we need to replace this, it'll be a simple matter of taking the, the cloth off and reframing this, this uh, oak frame. So, like I said, it's oak, it's a mission style, um, pretty good shape. It's a little bit rickety, but we'll have to take care of that. The finish is a bit worn on the leg, or the arms and uh, the front a little bit. Uh, yeah, not in bad shape, but we'll probably lighten it up a little bit, and it's, it does look like it's probably had a, another coat of varnish on it from the original. The other thing I'm, have to, I'm not too sure about what we're gonna do are these slats, I think are, were originally a little bit loose cause somebody stuffed like paper towels up inside here to the, the groove is a little bit wide. So we'll have to see what that's all about. But first of all, we're gonna have to kind of break it down and get the, the joints re-glued and then um, see what we can do with it. So this should be a fun project. The arms were held in with a screw, so I had to pull the plug out by using a screw, putting it in part way, and then using a hammer to just pop it right out. I found heat to be the best way to soften old glue, so I applied some heat and then used the pry bar to pull off these corner blocks. just a matter of adding some heat, prying a little bit, maybe adding a little more heat. Uh, you just have to be careful and you keep at it and they'll come off eventually. The back corner block had the manufacturer's label, the Cortland Cabinet Company. I wanted to take this off easy so I could reinstall it. The rest of the dis disassembly went pretty straightforward. It was a matter of using these spreader clamps, a mallet, um, pry bar, whatever it was that needed the time to pull it apart. But after a little bit of heat, they come apart pretty easily. Um, And about here where I realized that the whole thing was going to have to come apart because every single joint seemed to be pretty loose. I use a little hotel card to kind of protect the surface while I'm prying. I don't damage anything visible. Use a little scrap block to keep from hitting the wood directly with the mallet. And I'm marking each piece so I can put it back together the same way. The back assembly seemed to give me a little bit of trouble, but I finally got it apart. And here I am taking the paper towels out of the upper groove. Now I marked it with a uh, tape and a pencil, but before I actually started the stripping process, I used a little metal stamp to mark them. Hey, today we have something a little bit different. We're going over to the other shop I have uh, to do some the stripping. It's a, a metal building that I use for metal work and things, uh, a little bit messier type stuff. And right now it's mostly been storage, so 
it's still a mess, but please excuse that. I think it's gonna be a much better place to do the stripping. So come on over here, let's see this. Right. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna paint this on. Each piece, and then, we'll set it over the side to let it start working. Once the stripper had worked on the surface, I used a combination of scrapers and steel wool to remove that. I had to do this several times. You can see the amount of dirt that's actually still coming off after I've cleaned these. I've stripped them, I've washed them with um, mineral spirits. And this is, like I say, a um, Trisodium phosphate substitute, but you can just, I mean, you're just still getting a lot of color off of the, the wood. This will be the last step of the stripping process. So, we got all the pieces stripped. Now we gotta sand them. Um, I always like to go over everything with a hand sanding every inch so that I can pick up if there's anything I missed, any rough places that need to be repaired. Um, I'm going to have, use a scraper here in a couple areas where there were some um, finish that didn't come off and I can just use the scraper to kind of get that off. Pretty simple and easy. Got grabbing into the patina and all. So we'll get started with some sanding. Work hard all day, stone by stone, for the night to come. There's no sleep like that of tired bones. And rub my hands and whisper. What we're going to do now is prepare to get everything glued up. So we have some of these dowels still setting in here that didn't come out when we took it apart. So what I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is take a pair of pliers and I'm going to check and make sure they're good and sturdy. Now, the ones that might be a little bit loose, then I will go ahead and work those out. <clears throat> so those are in there good and strong. Um, so what I'm going to do is then we'll clean this up and we'll glue with that. Now, scrape any kind of excess glue off around the joint. Any glue on the pegs or dowels. Try this one. You can see here where the, the two scrapers have the blades at different angles. So down here, this one seems to work better and this one seems to work better on the, the dowel. So that's why I'm using two different ones. Now, once we get these cleaned up, we also will need to clean up the holes that these dowels go into. All right. So here's some of the, the holes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this rounded, a gouge. So it's got a little bit of uh, radius to it. It's the smallest one I have. And it fits pretty good in there. So I'm just gonna go in, I'm not trying to enlarge the hole any, but just scrape any glue off of there or clean up any kind of gunk from when we were stripping the piece. Now there's a little piece that broke out here when the glue joint came apart. I do still have that. So we'll get that fitted in there however it goes. And it goes like that. Um, we'll get that glued back in and there's still a chunk there that's glued to the other side and we'll see if that's uh, loose enough to get up or if I'm just going to glue it as it is. I think I am going to take a piece of 180 sandpaper to kind of give it a light going over there just to make sure everything else is off that. So let's take a moment here to talk about these back slats. 
As you can see, there's a big wide groove out in the back. And this slat goes in here. Now you can see there's a lot of room on either side of that. <clears throat> now, the, the, the theory is that only long grain to long grain glue joints are going to be strong. So there's really nothing over here going into the end grain this way to hold it. So they make it a little bit wide. It makes it easier to get to assemble and it's not weakening the joint any. Now, this is where someone had decided that it wasn't strong enough and they stuffed paper towels down the side there. Yeah, these slats I think are going to be pretty good as they are. Just make sure there's no residual glue on there. Now, we've got all the pieces cleaned up and ready to assemble. Okay, so here's my approach. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue up the back assembly. So I'm going to first of all glue, take the uh, slats and the two rails from the back, get that glued together as a sub-assembly, and then I'll glue these with the bottom rail and the sides and the second go of it. So first of all, I've got my sub-assembly lined up. I've got uh, a pot of hide glue warmed up, ready to go, a glue brush, and a mallet. Uh, I've also got my clamps ready to go to put those in here. I've cleaned out all the old glue, cleaned up all the old uh, stripping solution, and all this should be good to go. So I'm going to put some glue inside each of these slots. I am going to put a little bit on the tenon itself. Now these tenons, when I pulled them out, I pre-numbered them so that I could make sure I got them back in the same place that they came out of. Not sure it would have made a whole lot of difference, but just to be safe, I went ahead and marked each of them. I used a little metal stamp. Starting with a little off the top from the corner store. The funny thing about them now these bottom ones, unlike the top ones, do fit into the mortise, the tenon, let me rephrase that. The mortise and the tenon are both the same size. So they are going in without any problems. It's the upper ones that were a little bit larger. And I think that's probably because of assembly. Now, while that's setting up a little bit, I'll go ahead and start putting together or getting the uh, side assemblies ready to go so we can put all the chair back together. So let me get all this cleaned up and ready back for that. All right, so what I've done here so far 
is made a mess. I've got my sub assemblies ready to go. This is the the front legs with the cross stretch being or the cross piece. Um, the my stretchers are here ready to be put together, um, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue up the stretchers as a sub assembly, and I'll glue this up as a sub assembly. And then once I get those glued up, then I'll put the side pieces. Glue those on, glue the front on to the top, get that all clamped up, then I can worry about the side slats and the arms. So, let's get started with this sub-assembly of the stretchers. Okay. Set this over to the side. As quick as I can. As quick as I can. Okay, now the stress is on. I've got to get all this glued up at one shot. So, I'll glue this on, the two bottom side rails, and then I will get the um, front and get that glued on. So, no use talking about it, let's get her done. Well, good. That's at least one I've glued up, put the glue on the wrong end. No stress. Okay. I get this one on. Oh no! Alright, so we got it all glued up, everything clamped the way it's supposed to be. You saw the moment of panic where I just, um, I had put the one side rail to the bench or the seat inside out. So I really, I'd, there was that moment of panic that I really wasn't sure what I was going to do, but just when things like that happen, you know, you, you do the best you can to plan for it, but when things like that happen, you just need to move forward, disassemble it, clean off the glue, and reassemble it. Now, luckily, I caught that one before all the glue dried, so it was easy to pull it apart. The other joints didn't have to be redone, but if that had completely dried 
and I've realized that tomorrow, then I would have had to pull probably a majority of the seat apart, clean all the glue off, scrape it down real good, and then reassemble the whole thing. So luckily I caught it. But, you know, I think it, it does show the importance of having your steps planned out, following those steps, and then paying attention to what you're doing. You know, when, you're, when you've got boards that are identical looking and in the identical size, but yet they have angles cut differently, they have glue blocks on the inside. So when you're dealing with stuff like that, you really got to pay attention to make sure that you're getting everything back where you would. I think it's important to understand that you can fix it if you make a problem or make when you have a problem, you make a mistake. So don't panic like I did. Get in there and just fix the problem. So we got it all good. Only really cost me probably 10 minutes to get it back to where it needed to be. So it wasn't a huge mistake, but we got it. It's going to be rock solid. So for the last few minutes, what I've been doing is going on all the edges and getting any kind of <clears throat> um, loose grain, anything with snag or splinter and trying to get that taken off. Now I'm doing that with a couple different tools. I'm using an old um, spoke shave that is um, kind of a rounded bottom, kind of gets into places where it's a little bit more difficult. Um, so I'm trying to just knock off in the bad places with this, or the really more severe places, we'll say. And then just kind of going over the ones with the sandpaper, just kind of ease that edge a little bit. Now, I don't necessarily need to get everything, but I'd like to get anything that where the hands would touch. So, you know, inside or these rungs and stuff, I'm not as worried about those, although I'm going to take a look at those. Just want to make sure that there's nothing for anything to be sharp on a person's hand. So what we're going to do now is get some stain on it. All the glue has set for a while and uh, we'll get some stain on this and then I've wiped it down with the tack cloth one last time, gone over everything again, and I think we're ready to put some color on it. So, through discussion, we decided on using this uh, Mohawk, what they call their um, Radiant series. It's a color called Copper. All right. Let's start at the most visible spot on the chair, right? Now, one problem you have when you're dealing with lumber is ingrain soaks up the, the uh, stain more than the top grain, the side grain. So what I like to do is, as I'm moving along, obviously I'm wiping it off, and the rag has stain on it. So what I'll do is take that rag, which is not as much stain, and just kind of go over the end like that. And typically, I, I'm able to get a good, um, match to the collar that way by just kind of easing into the end grain. My choice of finish was shellac. I used a canned pre-mixed shellac that I cut down probably about 20% with a retarder uh, and then I applied it with a rag. Boy, 
All right, so I'm gonna reuse the upholstered bottom. Um, it's very distressed looking. And for right now, I think that'll look good. Um, what I do wanna do though is I've, I've taken the uh, blowgun and blew all the dust out of the inside and I vacuumed it real good. I cleaned it real good. But I wanna put a dust cover over the bottom just to kind of give it a little more finished look. So I have some of this um, dust cover material used for other upholstering projects. And what I need to do is I need to cut a piece that's about 20 by 20. And I will, then I'll staple that on. And drink that cool water till I get my fuel. Take me out past the mud and rust and all the broken bones and watch the sun fall down behind the hills I'm in love with a woman and she makes me want to sing a song I'm in love with a woman and she makes me Well, there we have it. An oak chair, probably about 100 years old, made by the Cortland Cabinet Company. Um, it was, as I said, intended. I was just going to fix some of the loose joints, strip it, and reassemble it. But it ended up that as I took one joint, and what you'll find a lot of times in a chair is once you move one joint that's loose, the next joint next to it is probably also loose. And it ended up a blessing in disguise because of taking it all completely apart. Um, it made it a lot easier to strip. Then I got it reassembled, was able to get it refinished. It's got about four coats of shellac and a coat of Gilboy's rose gold uh, wax on it. I think it turned out really nicely. The, um, the seat is original. It's an old kind of oil cloth uh, seat. It's pretty distressed looking. We kind of like that, but I'm not sure. We may end up putting a, a new cover on the bottom, um, reupholster that in a, in a leather. That would probably be nice. That would be the next step. Um, but for now, I think this will look really good in our living room. And thanks for stopping by.